This is Volleyball DNA. Look at this girl. She has her own spot. <laughs> Where are you, uh, Iris? <laughs> what can I say? I'm at Starbucks, okay? Starbucks is the place. <laughs> it's super quiet. Yeah. Uh. I, I love how you found your own Don't own jinx spot. it. Okay. Don't jinx it, okay? <laughs> we're, we're trying to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have Iris Tolenada on Volleyball DNA. And I mean, I think it's a timely guesting for Iris being that her name is in the news and there's a lot of developments happening right now in the world of Philippine volleyball. Most recently, I read this news just yesterday. So Sir Tats was saying that there's a 99% chance, 99% <laughs> chance that the 99. ABC... Yeah, it's crazy. 99% chance that the ABC would take place here. So, yeah. I mean, have you heard that news? And like, I mean... It's like an instant tournament for you and the rest of the players who try it out. How, how right. do you feel about that? I'm excited. Yeah, there were talks about it before, I think. And, you know, it's it's been a, a crazy time with, you know, sports stopping and starting and stopping again. But I'm super excited, especially that it's a 99% chance it's going to be in the Philippines. Um, <laughs> and, like, what better way to, you know, start – volleyball that way this year you know what I mean so mm -hmm. all I can say about it is that I'm really excited and I really hope it it happens I hope that one percent you know uh give increases the chances of it actually happening <laughs> man th that's crazy I mean I've, I've never heard something like that 99 percent <laughs> imagine how disappointing <laughs> it would be if it didn't push through anyway I know su super exciting because that means that the AVC would happen at the same time as the PVL. So it's mm -hmm. going to be volleyball action all around. All right, I want to backtrack a little bit though, Iris, because sometime yeah. in April, um, mm -hmm. the news broke that you were invited to try out. So I want to yes. ask you where you were, what your reaction was, and like <laughs> how, how did it happen? I mean, were, were you abroad? Did you have to fly back here? No, that's actually like part of the story. So no okay, one really okay. knew I was in the okay. Philippines, but <laughs> I came back. <laughs> I came back in March, actually. Okay, okay. And I was at my tita's farm in the province, uh, just having a family dinner and everything. And then I had been kind of in contact with uh, Sir Tony and Sir Oliver. And, uh, you know, because I'm doing film nation stuff as well. Yeah. Um, so then they found out I'm in the Philippines and then all of a sudden Sir Oliver called me and he was like, whoa, like why, you know, why didn't we know this and everything? And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm here. And so yeah. I got the invite and I just remember feeling like, oh my gosh, like, is this really happening? You know, because it's, it's obviously a dream come true for, you know, to be able to represent the Philippines, um, in anything, but let alone for something I do, something I'm passionate about. Like I was just, I got off the phone. I was really excited. I had to take a deep breath and like kind of process it before I told my parents like, oh, th this just happened, you know? <laughs> so it was, it was awesome. It was a great feeling, um, you know, especially because like I said, volleyball hasn't been happening. Um, you know, I've, I've been through a, a different path of volleyball for a little bit. So to get that call was just like, I felt honored. I felt like, wow, I'm, I'm supposed to be here. So I want to talk about that different path that you've been on. You were also mm -hmm. recently named the volleyball director for Phil Am Nation. Can I get a background mm -hmm. on what Phil Am Nation is? Is it like a group of um, potential volleyball players? I mean, finding their way back here to the homeland and getting an opportunity to play? Right. So our... Our goal is to find the best Phil Am talent, right? Mm. And to try to get them, you know, get them on the on the path of dual citizenship, like make sure you have that passport, mm. get your papers all sorted out. And then we want to get give them exposure. Like, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're a huge community out here, especially the volleyball community in the States. Like it's, there's a lot of Filipinos that play volleyball. So we want to try to find the best best talent out there, boys and girls, and we want to try to get them exposure internationally, whether, you know, wherever it is. But obviously, it would be great if they could be part of the Philippines, right? So um, we actually had our first showcase 
um, in April and we had college coaches attend and we're trying to, you know, get them connected and everything. So we have like a watch list. We have just these athletes that we're trying to push out there. Like, Hey, we gotta, we gotta get these kids noticed. So. So you had your showcase here in the Philippines because you said April. No, right? we had it. We, yeah, we had it in the States, but we had a Zoom. Uh, okay. Yeah, we were we were able to allow the coaches to watch via Zoom. And, you know, so that was our first showcase. And it was really exciting. I was stressed out. I was running it uh -huh. from here, yeah. you know, but it it all worked out and it was it was exciting. I was like, wow, this yeah. is this can be a huge thing. And we're really excited for the path of volleyball. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, um, in, in basketball, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the 90s, there was an influx of Phil Am talent. So hopefully yeah. you could be the bridge for volleyball. Yeah. And I mean, great job. I mean, huge responsibility you. for somebody, you know, who's still so young and to be able to, to head <laughs> Phil Am Nation. Thank you. Right? <laughs> Iris, I want to talk about the actual tryouts. Um, sure. So initially, there were seven setters invited. But then mm -hmm. only two of you showed up, um, you mm -hmm. and uh, Camille Kal, who's, who's still very young. Um, yeah. What was it like being there and, you know, having to play with the veterans, like, like those who've been on the national team for a while, like Mylene Pat, like Majoy Baron, mm -hmm. Abby, and, and Jaja. Um, describe mm -hmm. the whole experience in the tryouts. Okay, so, I mean, we got there and you know what? I... I just have to remember, like, I can only control what I can control. And like, mm -hmm. I went in there with no expectations at all. Just, mm -hmm. well, besides the fact that like, I'm going to do my best no matter what. So whoever shows up, let's make this happen. And uh, let's see where we can take it. So we, we get there, um, you know, we follow all the protocols. And the process itself, like, was kind of weird because, you know, with the protocols, we had to only allow certain people on the court and then the rest of us had to stay back. So mm -hmm. as, as we're trying to, you know, the coaches are trying to assess everyone's skills and, uh, you know, see the potential of the team. Um, it's kind of hard not being able to play a full six on six, yeah. but, um, you know, you just have to take advantage of when you step on the court, like how good are you doing? How, how can you best how can you perform your best in that moment? So um, I thought everyone was great. You know, no one had played for a while. Coach was mm -hmm. coming around to us asking us like, oh, when's the last time you played volleyball? When's the last <laughs> time you played volleyball? And everyone was like, oh, a few months. Like, it's been kind of hard. So he understood. And I thought, you know, it. I'm sure people were nervous. I'm sure the younger ones were nervous. And being on the court again, um, with national team players, it was, it was exciting. And um, I had been wanting to set a few people for a long time and it was really cool to be able to step on the court and be like, oh, I finally set her a ball. Like, <laughs> this, this is awesome. So. Like who, give me some yeah. names. Give me some names that, that you enjoyed setting for in the tryouts. Well, of course I've, I've set Abby Marano before. So mm. I was like, okay, cool. I want to build this connection. I want to build this connection. I've been wanting to set Jaja for a long time. I've been uh. wanting to set uh, Del Palomato. Oh my gosh. Mm. She's a beast. Like, and Manessa. So I've, I've only played uh, against them. Right. Uh, so yeah. being able to finally set these middles, I love setting middles. Like mm. that's, that's how I want to play. But, mm. um, yeah, being able to set these middles was really exciting because I think, uh, with their size, especially, um, it's going to be, they can, they can be a, a huge force to be reckoned with in Philippine volleyball. And also Mylene, I haven't really been able to mm. ever set her, um, probably in the last Philippine trials that we had, but mm. it was really exciting, exciting to set my lane because she wants to go fast. <laughs> and, and there's news right now also that they're looking for another lefty spiker. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, that, that's part of the wish list for... Uh, yeah. for okay. I, I just want to ask this out of curiosity. So there are four mm -hmm. slots left. Like, is there okay. any player in particular that you want to set for who could be added <laughs> to the mix? Um, this, I mean, there's a huge list. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. I mean, of course. Could, could, could be a former yeah. teammate. Could be somebody you always look forward to playing with. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Mila Pablo. Like I have to, mm. I have to shout out my girl, Mila. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, Eliza Valdez, she's, you know, she's part of the Philippine core. So 
of course, she's a great ball control player and uh, I think she's gotten better over the years. So I definitely want to be able to set her. And uh, Isa Pantelias, I think like mm. people, man, she, she is so good. Like I had the opportunity to work with her a little bit and man, that girl's volleyball IQ is amazing. Oh, speaking of volleyball IQ, Sus Molina. I, I played with her before and she's like, one of the most intelligent volleyball players in this country. Like the things that Sess can do, she's, I think, yeah, I, I would love to see those hitters in the roster, but you know, wishful thinking, okay? Guys, we are getting a glimpse of the mind of Iris Tolenada breaking it down. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I was actually only expecting one name, but you gave me like four. So, so oh, thank you for Anton, that. I can give you a whole list, but you know, <laughs> we're, we'll just keep it there for now. What about the young players who impressed you? I mean, I can only imagine uh, for, for the ones who are still in college. I mean, these players are like mm -hmm. 21 years old, 20 years old, and they're already part of the national team pool. Did anybody in particular impress you from the young ones? Yeah, I thought, I thought Cal, like Camille Cal, she impressed yeah. me. She, yeah. She's so young, but when, if she gets like the right training consistently over the years, she can be a great setter for sure. And that excites me because it's it's obviously, you know, it's pushing me to be a better setter. It's making me uh, dig deep a little bit and be like, oh, I can't, I can't let the young ones beat me out, you know? <laughs> uh -huh. It just keeps me on my toes. But yeah, she impressed me and she has this like calm demeanor about her on the court. Um, so that was really exciting to see. I want to ask about the setters. Um, as mm -hmm. I said earlier, seven were invited. And it would have been great to have all of you girls on the court. I mean, all yeah. that talent there and for all the coaches to assess. Um, I don't know if you've played against all the setters, but like, I, I just mm -hmm. want to get your thoughts on um, playing against the likes of Gia Morado, like Kim Fajardo. Um, mm -hmm. It's always a chess match when you have the great setters in the Philippines go against each other. Um, is there for anybody sure. in particular that, that you enjoy playing against and uh, look forward to playing with in the future? Um, I've only actually played against Gia. So, oh, okay. it's, so it's you haven't always, played yeah. against Kim Fajardo? Not yet? No. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Because they, I went to PBL or Shakey's slash PBL um, uh, while they were still in PSL. So, okay. but playing against Gia has always been super fun. Like, I know she's a big name. I know she's good. Um, and she comes from a veteran team. Like she mm. comes from a team that's been together for a long time, an experienced team. So me, um, you know, with my volleyball journey, like going back and forth to the States, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's always me kind of trying to um, input my leadership, input my experience into my teams just to kind of catch up. So as I compete with Gia, it's always exciting because it's like, wow, this team, this team across the net has been training for so long. And I'm over here, like trying to lead my team, trying to lead my team, trying to establish this offense, you know, it's, just, it's, it pushes me to be a better setter is what I'm essentially getting at. So I love competing what, with good setters. <laughs> what, what about Kim Fajardo? What is your uh, impression on the way Kim plays, like watching her from, from afar? Yeah, Kim's a baller for sure. She's, she definitely has earned that title of being one of the best setters in the Philippines. Um, she's experienced. She has a lot of champions, championship experience under her belt. Um, and she doesn't lead with her voice. You know, not, I don't see a lot of setters here leading with their voice, um, but she leads by example. And like I said, she has, a, she has a pretty cool demeanor on the court as well. And I, thought, I actually see a little bit of Camille in Kim. I think wow, okay. I talked about this. I talked about this with Abby at the tryouts because mm. she was the one who brought it up. And I was like, yeah, like the way their form is and like their it's it's just the demeanor that um, is pretty cool. So if if Camille's one of Camille's idols or role models is Kim, then she's on a pretty good path, I think. <laughs> wow. I, I love how you also break down the play style of, of every setter that I ask you about. Oh, come on now. <laughs> That, that's I, why, that's so why you're the program director. <laughs> that, that's why you're a program director. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to ask you, Iris, about... Because um, as you said, um, you have a different background as compared to the likes of Kim and Gia who grew up here. You grew up 
in the States. Was it mm-hmm. ever a dream of yours to come back to the homeland to play volleyball? Actually, I didn't know much about it, to be honest. And that's why like being part of Film Nation now is so great because for players like me who didn't know I could achieve these things, who didn't know I could go international and have and someday like compete against some of the best players in the world. Like when I was on the Philippine team in 2015, like I would have, if you'd have asked me that 10 years ago, would have never imagined that, you know? So it, it became a dream as, um, as I learned more about it. And it was actually my parents who, because they're volleyball fanatics, like, mm. like no other, <laughs> they're crazy volleyball parents, but I love them. Um, so they actually started talking to me about it and, um, you know, we got, we got my Philippine passport and they're like, dude, go for it. Just see how far you can get. Let's do this. Um, we'll help you blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I, I never would have imagined and like sitting here today doing this interview with you about Mm. me playing on the national team again, like, oh my gosh, it's exciting. (laughs) Yeah. I I remember when I first met you, Pokari had just won a championship and then they Mm -hmm. guested at one of our uh, live stream shows and then you were there. So I, Mm -hmm. so I was like, Oh, I haven't seen Iris yet. Um, And they were Mm -hmm. building you up. They were saying, oh, she's going to be our (laughs) main setter in in the next conference. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) And then when you finally played, that's when I got your background story. Mm -hmm. Um, And and, uh, I'll never forget your dad's name, Ingemar, right? Yes. Uh, Yes. Name played for FEU. Um, Yes. uh, For the benefit of those watching right now, um, how did it all begin for you, uh, your volleyball journey? For me? Okay. Well, of course, my dad wants wanted all of his kids to play sports. I'm the Bunso, so I have mm-hmm. two kuyas, one ate. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, so when my dad came to the States, uh, he joined the Navy and had always wanted his kids to play. Like, he would always ask us, like, oh, do you want to come play, watch me play volleyball? Do you want to come watch us? And so one day, me and my ate were like, fine, we'll come watch. But, you know, we just, we were little kids. We just sat on the bench and like dodged all the volleyballs flying at us and everything. We were like, why would anyone play this? Right. <laughs> so then um, <laughs> that, that kind of took a pause for a little bit. And then when I got to middle school, my sister mm. was in eight, no, seventh grade. I was in sixth grade mm. and she joined the middle school team and I was still doing cheer and basketball um, at the time. So <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just watch her, I guess, you know, we have to carpool, whatever. So I just started watching her play and watching her team play and saw how fun it was and how exciting. And, you know, you, you gotta be on your toes all the time. So then, um, the PE teacher who was the coach at the time asked me like, Oh, uh, you know, we we're missing a player in practice. Like, do you want to just see if you can play? I was like, okay, whatever. So I joined. I had so much fun. And then it started from there. It was, wow. it was mostly because of my sister. <laughs> was, it, was your sister, sister also a, a setter? Yeah. So she was a setter slash uh, became a DS libero when she got to high school. But anytime we play together, she always wants to set. And I'll be like, okay, I'll play opposite. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but what about your dad? What, what position did he play? Oh, man, he, I think he was an outside. He switches it up all the time. He, mm. he, he wants to show me that he can do everything, right? <laughs> but I'm going to say that he was an outside. <laughs> all right. Um, earlier, you were telling me about uh, getting your Philippine passport, which is obviously a big mm-hmm. step for you playing here in, in, in the Philippines. But was there ever a chance for you to play collegiate volleyball here in the Philippines? Or by the time the process started of you coming here, was the window already closed? Um, it was kind of closed just because um, my parents offered like, oh, you could go play college in the Philippines. And I was like, mm. well, no, I kind of just wanted to stay in the States. And like, mm. you know, that's, that was the path that I wanted to go down. So it was kind of like me closing that door on mm. college volleyball here, especially because I didn't know much about it. I barely knew anything about playing college volleyball in the States. Okay. So <laughs> going back to the homeland, I was like, I don't, I, I literally didn't know anything about it. You came here 2015, right? Mm-hmm. What was that the first time ever? Or I mean, you've, you've been a, going back like 
or, or no? That was the first time ever for volleyball. The last time ah, I was in the Philippines okay. before that was like when I was four or five years old. So oh, I hadn't so been that in the long, Philippines huh? for a long that, time. That yeah. long. Okay. Yeah. What was your impression mm-hmm. of the Philippines though? Like, um, because uh, <laughs> most <laughs> Philip Americans I meet, uh, they, they think... Um, they they think of us as like super primitive like if we have to go to a certain mall we have to oh the mall at <laughs> island number 200 or something like that so what was your impression that's of- hilarious <laughs> <laughs> well when i got off the plane and had to jump in like a, a cab to go to the to the first place i lived i was like oh my god this the way people drive here is insane. <laughs> but I, I had no choice but to trust whoever was behind the wheel. <laughs> but now I'm used to it. I'm like, ah, whatever. It's fine. Wait, wait a minute. So the first time you came here, um, you had to take a cab? Like family didn't pick you up and stuff? Uh, I think they, someone did. I can't remember, honestly. I think I, think I had my dad with me and I was uh, like, what is happening? He's like, that's just the way okay. it is. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that is, that's funny. <laughs> that's like a, like you were you were thrown into the fire right away. I was thrown but, into the fire. You, you and got, then all you of got sudden, immersed. Like, <laughs> for sure. And then like the following couple days, it was like practice time already. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm literally being thrown in the fire right now. But uh, it was it was crazy. But everyone was nice here, of course. You know, the, everyone always talks about Philippine hospitality and how nice everyone is and it's true and I, I love it that was definitely one of the first things i noticed as well okay I'll, I'll tell you something that i noticed recently so they put out the list of the mm-hmm. players who are part of the national team pool and like your name mm-hmm. is at the top because they have the setters so it's like iris toledada unattached <laughs> I've never seen that before. Same. <laughs> like Iris like, Tolano, oh. unattached. What? what? <laughs> I, okay, here's the thing. Guys, sobrang galing nito si Iris, okay? Uh, you were the number one pick in the PSL draft, right? Once upon a mm-hmm. time. Okay? And yes. then champion sa Pocari Sweat, okay? Mm-hmm. Volleyball director ng Phil Amnation. Yeah. Iris Tolenada. Better recognize. Okay. But uh, I want to ask you, why, why is that? Why, why don't you have a club team? Because for me, it's, it's weird. Like a talent like you uh, does Listen, not have a club weird team. Weird for me too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I was with Modalite. Um, yeah. And then obviously the pandemic hit. So it, it, it took a toll on our team. And unfortunately, we disbanded at, you know, with terrible timing, unfortunately. So um, you know, by the time I had started reaching out to teams, they were already full. They have, you know, however many setters. And, you know, I get it. You can only have a certain amount of setters on a team. Like if I were a different position, like a outside or something, like different story. But it's hard to uh, uh, fill your roster space with so many setters. So I understand. Uh, long story short, that's why I'm not on a team. <laughs> You know, I think everything happens for a reason, though. Because, look, yeah. now, so you weren't on a team, but obviously you, you still had something to do. And it's a huge mm-hmm. responsibility. I think it's something that uh, what you do, you know, it's, it's a valuable contribution to the sport of mm-hmm. volleyball here in the Philippines. Getting Phil Americans to have opportunities to play back here in the homeland. But, um, yeah. I, I, I mean, now, imagine that from not having a club team, you're now part of the national team pool. And, and they said that the 16 who tried out would be shoe-ins. So, I mean, yeah. I just want to say congratulations for, for that. I mean... Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the, right? I mean, who, who, who would have thought? Like, I mean, as you were explaining earlier, you, you were delighted with the news. I, I just want to say congratulations sure. on, on the opportunity. Thank you. So Appreciate I, it. Uh, what can we expect from Iris Tolenada uh, on the national team? Um, you know, I've I actually did a reflection about this the other day, and it's <laughs> I do a lot of reflection. I'm trying to do a lot of you know inner work, the things that people don't see on social media. Mm-hmm. So it's I know that I'm the oldest on the team right now. I know that I have a lot of experience playing volleyball. I know that I bring a different part of volleyball because I was a coach for a long time. I was a collegiate volleyball coach. I mm-hmm. also coached um, 
you know, some of the top uh, high school club teams in the States. So with all the knowledge I've gained from my amazing mentors, my amazing coaches, like I want to bring all of that plus my experience, plus the leadership. Like I, I know I've been trained to be a good leader and that's exactly what I want to bring to this team. Um, so I'm just, I want to go in and do my best every single day and hopefully make those around me better. So that's, that's always been my goal as a, as a player. We're looking forward to that, Iris. Now, before I let you go, I want to ask you about uh, the Premier Volleyball League. I want you to be a spectator for a bit. Uh, just out of curiosity, <laughs> I mean, as I said earlier, the AVC, uh, we're all crossing our fingers that these tournaments take place. So while the AVC 99% chance. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be watching the PVL, obviously. I mean, it's a huge development for, sure. for us right now. 12 teams. Mm -hmm. um, is there any particular team that you're going to be rooting for in the upcoming PVL? Oh boy, rooting for, I don't know. I, I can <laughs> tell you, I, I can tell you I'm excited to watch a lot of teams play. I'm really excited to watch the matchup of F2 and Creamline. Like mm. I'm sure everybody is. Mm. And uh, I'm excited to see Santa Lucia in there. I, they're, mm. they're a great team. They have a lot of good people on their roster as well. So mm. I'm just super excited for that, you know, old PSL plus new PVL, like, combination and i'm just excited to see some good volleyball after such a long time well iris uh, we're also super excited to watch volleyball and it's hopefully hopefully there will be no hiccups and it will all happen uh mid this 2021 iris tolanada on yes, volleyball please. dna iris I'll, I'll let you get back to your coffee at starbucks uh, <laughs> enjoy your day and thank you so much again thank for the you time. so much for having me thank you i appreciate it See you guys on the next episode. Thank you for watching Volleyball DNA. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get notified for future episodes and interview highlights. And while you're at it, head over to our Facebook page by clicking on the link in the description.